anyways. Uh, so I am Shreya Bhuvan from IIT Roorkee. That is set in uh, at the foothills of Himalayas and uh, it's in north of India. And it is actually the oldest technical college in India, which was like set up in 1853. And at that time, it was called Thompson College of Engineering. Anyways, um, this summer I have been working with Dr. Webukai at uh, the U, uh, UW Carbon Cancer Center, and I've been working on multimodality molecular imaging to target tumor angiogenesis, and we've used uh, antibodies as well as graphene nanoparticles to do the same. Now, uh, cancer, as we know, is uh, the second leading cause of death in USA, and the major problem that uh, accompanies its uh, treatment is its late detection. By the time it is detected, it's already so, I mean, way ahead into, uh, I mean, it's like way ahead into the disease, so its uh, cure becomes impossible. So this is where molecular imaging can help us. Molecular imaging is the visualization, characterization, and measurement of a biological process, either at molecular or cellular level, in uh, living systems. And these uh, imaging modalities, these include uh, position, uh, positron emission tomographies, and uh, uh, optical imaging, which includes fluorescence, bioluminescence, and uh, magnetic resonance imaging, etc. Now, uh, to improve upon these imaging modalities, either in terms of uh, improving upon the imaging labels or uh, just uh, changing the imaging labels uh, totally, we can use uh, nanotechnology, which would help us in early detection as well as in accurate treatment of uh, accurate diagnosis and treatment of uh, cancer or even other diseases. And at the interface of molecular imaging and therapy and nanotechnology, the Kylab works. Now, um, these are some of the small animal molecular imaging modalities that are available, which includes optical, as I said before, MRI, PET, CT, that is computed tomography, ultrasound imaging, and SPET. And you know, the University of Wisconsin has four out of six of these, which are being used for research. Now, the aspect of cancer that um, that my project would uh, that my projects would be targeting is angiogenesis, which is formation of new blood vessels. And these uh, this is very important for initiation and progression of cancer. Uh, one of the proteins that are expressed mainly in the vascular endothelial cells during angiogenesis in uh, proliferating tumors is CD105. And this is a transmembrane protein. So this would be our target. The targeting ligand that we would be using in our project uh, is uh, TRC105, which is a monoclonal antibody. And this binds to both human and murine uh, CD105. And uh, in fact, it is uh, about to uh, step into second phase trials in USA, clinical trials in USA. And uh, because PET is such a great imaging uh, uh, modality, in fact, it's uh, uh, one of the primary uh, imaging modalities for uh, uh, for t uh, tumor detection. Uh, due to its uh, excellent sensitivity, pen uh, tumor penetration, and its uh, ability to be uh, the images of PET can be accurately quantified. So uh, we'll be using uh, PET, uh, that is positron emission tomography, as one of the major uh, imaging modalities for my project. Now, uh, generally, uh, like. Uh, PET, as of now in uh, clinical oncology, it uses fluorodeoxy glucose, which is a uh, which is a glucose molecule which is bound to uh, fluorine, a radio labeled fluorine, as you can see over here. And this radio tracer is now uh, injected into the body intravenously, and where uh, the this fluorine it decays slowly, emits positron positrons which uh, annihilate with electrons and release gamma rays, which can be uh, detected. And this is how uh, tumor is imaged tumor or in fact any uh, disease can be imaged. But uh, the problem is uh, that this uh, FDG, it is based on the uh, fact that it would be incorporated in glucose metabolizing uh, regions. And cancer, is, uh, cancer is, has been shown to be a highly uh, active uh, uh, metabol uh, metabolic tissue uh, for glucose and, it, but, uh, and uh, FDG is not cancer specific. So this can have high uptake in normal organs, which normally metabolize glucose very, uh, like at a very high rate. For example, brain, heart, and muscle. And also, in some conditions, like inflammatory conditions or some uh, infectious diseases, or after surgery, uh, the tissues in those regions they show a high uh, uptake of glucose. So this might result in false positives. 
So uh, that means that uh, so we need some imaging modality or uh, sorry some imaging tracer which would be very specific to tumor. So uh, this is where we use antibodies. Now uh, why do we bring in graphene at all which is a nanoparticle? The, uh, the thing is that uh, nanoparticles they show they have a large surface area onto which several imaging labels can be uh, conjugated. So this would give a, uh, a high signal, dramatic signal amplification. Also we can attach different uh, targeting ligands onto the nanoparticles and so this would increase the binding affinity and specificity of the constructs. And uh, also nanoparticles have been shown to uh, bypass biological barriers, even the blood-brain barriers in some cases. So the targeting efficiency is enhanced. And in future, what uh, can be done or is postulated is that a single nanoparticle can act as a substrate for holding uh, the imaging tracers, the ligands, as well as the drugs, so that you can have simultaneous imaging, diagnosis, and cure uh, and uh, treatment of the disease. So, if that happens, that would be uh, like from some paper that I've read, people say that nanotechnology can is actually the only answer probably now to effectively deal with cancer. Uh, so, with this overview, I'd like to uh, introduce you to my projects. The first one is uh, we'll try to uh, target vasculature, tumor vasculature, using functionalized protein oxide nanosheets. And uh, the second project would deal with uh, developing an antibody based dual modality agent for a PET and optical imaging in breast cancer, uh, 41 cells of breast cancer. So, moving on with my first project. We have this graphene oxide nanosheet onto which we would uh, conjugate the TRC105 which is our antibody and onto which we would uh, be uh, conjugating our radio tracer using a, this is NOTA actually, a, a collator for uh, radionuclides and so I will go on with my project. So first of all with graphene, what is graphene? Graphene is actually a monolayer of carbon atoms, it is a two dimensional sheet in which carbon atoms are, uh, like take the form of hexagons and uh, this is a very amenable uh, nanomaterial because it can be easily wrapped up into fullerenes or can be rolled into uh, uh, nanotubes as you can see in this animation here and it can be stacked on one or these can be stacked on top of each other to form graphite and actually it has been very uh, much in news since it won the Nobel Prize in 2010 so when it was discovered and uh, but it has not really been used in biomedical uh, uh, sciences as such it has mainly found uses in electronics so it is it would be an interesting uh, material to uh, work with uh, because just uh, like apart from the high surface area which all the nanomaterials provide it has also been shown that graphite uh, graphene is uh, has a high believer stability it shows uh, low toxicity and it is very easy to functionalize because it has a plain sheet like structure so it would be very easy to attach things onto it. Now this is my workflow. Uh, so what we did was that we took graphene oxide nanosheet which was around 10 to 15 nanometers in dimensions and we conjugated NOTA which is our bifunctional chelator for radionuclides onto it. Then we attached the antibody which would be a targeting ligand onto it. Now these constructs were then tested in vitro in Vuvex and uh, by microscopy studies and fax analysis and after the successful uh, like we got some good results with it and so we uh, now can we, uh, we labeled copper 64 which is a radionuclide for PET imaging onto it and uh, these constructs were then intravenously injected into breast tumor bearing mice and, uh, and we imaged them at different time points from 3 hours on to 48 hours and then the mice were sacrificed and uh, biodistribution was carried out using uh, gamma counter to validate the PET data. So this is the first step where we conjugate uh, NOTA onto uh, graphene oxide. NOTA is basically uh, a uh, triaza cyclononine, triacetic acid, this is a macrocycle and the compound of NOTA that we use is, uh, use is actually benzyl isothionate derivative of isothiocyanate derivative of NOTA so that it would help us in uh, uh, like you know attaching it to graphene oxide nanosheets. So these uh, graphene oxide nanosheets are also functionalized with a PEG 
tech would help us in to act with help would help to act as a spacer between um, Rafin and uh, Nota. And similarly, we attach uh, the antibody to uh, Rafin oxide using PEG again. And then we can uh, we carry out facts and fluorescence microscopy studies. The results I would not be able to then can I show it to you, show them to you. But so then we carried on with copper labeling, and this nota here it uh, so when we incubate with, with uh, copper at a particular pH, we see that the copper uh, atom it goes and uh, fits inside the. Uh, cavity uh, formed by the uh, bridges, the carbon bridges and um, the nitrogen atoms. And these bonds that you can see over here, these are actually coordinate bonds. So the bonds are pretty strong. And uh, so this is how we uh, radio label the graphene conjugates. And now uh, these conjugates are uh, injected intravenously in mice. And as we can see, these are the PET images. Uh, at 3 hour time point and 48 hour time point and the control would be uh, just a plain graphene oxide nano sheet without any uh, targeting uh, antibody that is you know, TRC 105 and we can see a very good uh, uh, image, a very good localization to the tumor in case of the conjugates but in case of graphene oxide we can hardly see any uh, uh, tumor uptake. So this shows that um, the graphene oxide and uh, the, con uh, the graphene oxide and TRC105 conjugates uh, have a very high tumor, uh, like comparatively high tumor uptake. And with a uh, time at 48 hours, you can see there's a diminishing of signals. So that is probably because of uh, one uh, copper 64 it has a uh, definite half life of about 12.8 hours. And so it starts decaying. So the, uh, the signal would diminish, yes. And also, uh, it's, uh, the conjugate starts getting eliminated from the mouse. So, uh, so this was basically the first project, and uh, that I completed in here. And uh, so we see that uh, the TRC105 conjugation to uh, graphene oxide it increases the tumor uptake. Also, uh, uh, PET, would, uh, PET has allowed. Uh, good quantitative and uh, non-invasive measurement of uh, graphene oxide conjugates <coughs> in living mice. And uh, if uh, we can further uh, develop it, we, we would uh, need to perform some more experiments, like some blocking experiments to confirm that uh, graphene oxide and uh, TRC-105 conjugates are actually being uh, directed to the tumor because uh, of uh, CD-105, because of the specificity for CD-105 and not because uh, the tumor vasculature is just leaky and so antibodies tend to uh, like you know get easy uh, get into it easily and so um, if this thing can be developed further on so in future we might expect some image guided drug delivery also from uh, these conjugates or similar conjugates now my second project would, uh, was uh, development of antibody based dual modality pet optical <coughs> imaging uh, agent in which we use an antibody, the same antibody, TRC-105. The main reason why we want to uh, do dual modality imaging is because uh, as of now we do not have any uh, modality, a single uh, imaging modality, which is perfect in itself and would be enough to answer all your questions about diagnosis of a particular disease. For example, uh, optical imaging, it, is, uh, it has good spatial resolution, but it is very difficult to accurately quantify the fluorescence uh, signals that we get. And also, it has, a, it has poor tissue penetration. Uh, with PET, which, has, which is very sensitive and can be uh, very uh, easily quantified, uh, the problem is that it has poor spatial resolution. The images are not very well resolved. So the, if we can combine both of these, we can get complementary and 